Zadrizes bus darīs, kas tev. Okay, so let's try to figure out what's going to happen in season two, what was supposed to happen, and how it uh, affects how awesome the show is going to be, kind of, right? So I'm not really good at summarizing the intro to my videos because I haven't really recorded it yet. Maybe I'll go back and start recording this afterwards. But anyway, please, like, slap a like on this video. Like goal's going to be 420. <laughs> get it? And, and also make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications all the way on. So that way you'll get an alert every single time I'll drop a video without to wait for House of the Dragon Season 2 and 3. Or as it's known on this channel, The Long Night. Alright, so like I just mentioned, Season 2 and 3. They, it's going to be filmed in tandem, which is amazing. Because that means, well, it hasn't been confirmed yet. But when you go back and read the article, they're literally saying, Hey, we're going to go ahead and green light Season 3. We're really close to doing so. Uh, the major battle that was supposed to happen in Season 2 is being pushed back to Season 3. Right? So... That, in my opinion, just makes sense. We don't have to wait as long for season two, for one, because it's two episodes less. And also, if they're already green lighting a season, right? So season three, before season two even starts filming, that means that it will be way less of a wait in between two and three. Probably less of a wait between one and two, and season two only has eight episodes. All right, so <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of talking in circles. All right, so these are some of the things that should have happened in Season 2 and probably mostly still going to happen, obviously, aside from the Battle of the Gullet, right? So the very first thing, Jaceris and Winterfell, right? We need to j develop Jaceris as a character. Now that we know, you know, the battle that he... I'll say this, I haven't said it in a while. Spoiler warning. Everything I'm about to say after this, spoilers. I've already said some spoilers, but I'm about to say some more, right? So... Jace is going to get to Winterfell, right? And now that we know his death is going to be pushed back to Season 3, remember, he dies in the Battle of the Gullet. There's something like five dragons on screen, right? All three dragon siege, Jaceris, his two younger brothers, Aegon and Viserys. Everybody in that has a dragon, right? And they're fighting the Chirarchy, right? And also, Corlys and the Valarion ships are there as well. And the way Jace dies is terrible. He basically is flying through, swooping, burning ships and shit, right? And then he gets a, a dang dang on, uh, basically like a claw with a chain on it, right? It gets attached to his dragon, Veermax's wings. And Veermax is flying so fast that once the chain embeds itself in Veermax's side, it literally rips a fucking hole in a gas the size of a, well enough to kill a dragon, right? So that's what happens to Jace, but that's not going to be happening until, until season three. The main reason why I think they decided to do this is because if they filmed that battle for season two, we would be waiting until the end of 2024 for it. HBO is listening to us. They know that we don't want to wait two years in between seasons. That's just not feasible. So they've decided to push it back, right? Give them more time to film because technically while we're watching season two, yeah, after season two airs, we can wait another six months. That whole time, they would have been filming season three. So that's amazing, right? So some of the other events that we are going to have um, for season two for sure, right? So Jace arriving in Winterfell, right? And Blood and Cheese, a son for a son, the direct, uh, you know, effect of what happened in season one, episode 10. That's Lucerus being killed by um, Vagar and... Aemond, right, when he was an envoy outside of Storm's End, the direct result of that is blood and cheese. Damon hires a rat catcher cheese and blood a former gold cloak to go in and sneak in and kill Aegon's son and heir Jaehaerys. Well, the show's twisting it up. Uh, potentially they're there to kidnap his heir, but things go awry and boom, bang, biggity, bomb. Right? So we have Jason Winterfell, Blood and Cheese, and then also, this is my favorite because these dudes are my friends. I talk to them often. I'm talking about Eric and Eric Cargill, that faithful duel between the twins. One's for the Greens, one's for the Blacks, one's for the Queen's parties, one's for the Princess party. They fight each other in Dragonstone. One's pretending to be the other one, and they die at the end of the duel mortally wounded i personally hope that their death will be pushed to season three because i want to see my boys on screen as long as possible we have the taking of heron hall right that's where damon lands his dragon cracks he's on the top of the spire the king's spire in heron hall and takes it by shedding no blood we know from a leaked scene that i'm not going to mention at all if you want to watch go <laughs> check the link down below in the description it's been copyright striked i don't want to get this one copyright striked but yeah um damon is uh, you know in a scene with alice rivers right and then we also have the dragon seeds that has to be developed these characters are sort of replace some of the main dragon riders uh for the blacks obviously you know 
off the white and Hugh Hammer turn tail and go and join the Greens. But we need to develop them. We need to have, we need to care about them, right? The similar situation with Jaceres, right? We need to have as much time with him on screen before his death so it means more. It's the same thing with Lucerius, right? The show made Lucerius' death so much more impactful and meaningful than, than in the books. He's like the first death aside from Lyman Beesbury in The Dance of the Dragons. And George kind of glosses over it, right? Because it's a book. He's got to move things forward. But the TV show made it amazing. So they're kind of trying to do that again. And let's be honest. As, as successful and as amazing. Who cares about the critical success, right? Because we're just fans. But as amazing as the show was... Right? Even people who hated Game of Thrones Season 8 and said they would never watch it again, they all watched it and they want more. Right? Well, let's give some faith to them. HBO was probably like, yo, Ryan, my man, George, my man, do whatever the hell y'all want and think is narratively appropriate. Get the show out to the fans faster while also decreasing the time in between seasons and telling as much story as this is possible. HBO probably literally just said, here's the reins, guys. Do what you need. Right? This is not the same thing as Game of Thrones Season 8, the last two seasons being cut short, because the only reason why that happened is because Dan and Dave were literally trying to get done quickly so they could move on to their next project. But that's not the case here. Ryan is in for the long haul, and obviously, so is George. Thank you for watching. I do not. Please slap a like on this. Like goal is going to be 420. And also, please consider subscribing and turn notifications on. Um, follow me on social media as well if you want. And if you want a little bit more content, check out my Patreon. It's linked down below in the description. Big shout out to Tyler Schnabel, the North Muscle member, and my girl, Brian Johnson. Thank you all for watching, and uh, thank you all for listening.